Chou Guo, Shen Jiu Guo. That was Mandarin for once the head is through, the body is through, meaning that figuring stuff out is the most difficult part. The rest is just execution. And so today, I can show you how I finished, yes you heard me right, I said finished, the bow thruster project. You may remember that last time we spoke about the bow thruster, it was already fully incorporated into the hull, but that I had trouble getting it to run. But before we get to that, let's put some props on there. I have two six-bladed propellers, I add some boat grease to the shaft, then I put the propellers on with the bolt at first only hand tied. Right now on the inside, here's what I did to get it to run. I doubled up the capacity of the main battery bank. This might still be too little, but at least like this I can run it properly. For the required second battery bank, I also increased the capacity and this time used a 24 volt battery bank because that's why it wouldn't run before as the control board also needs a 24 volt power supply in order to trigger the battery isolator and the relays. Those made the clicking noises we heard but without a 24 volt power supply the motor wouldn't run. Now then, let me show you this monster bow thruster in action. I can only run it for a very short time while not immerged in the water, as this could damage it. So I'm afraid we're gonna have to wait until the boat is in the water to fully unleash this beast. Next I have to build some protection so that the thing doesn't get ripped off by the first sandbank I hit. So I got some steel square tubes, bent to semicircles, which I'm gonna somehow bolt to that large fin. I want to get it as close to the bow thruster as possible, in order to not increase the draft too much, as the bow thruster is already the lowest point of the hull. After making a total of four of these arcs, I also made a couple of spacers, and so next I'm gonna drill some holes through the spacers and two of the arcs. The holes need to be perfectly aligned so that the bolts can fit all the way through. To achieve this I'm drilling all the way through the upper part to make a mark on the lower part. And once I drill those holes, all the parts are perfectly aligned and the bolts fit through easily. This was one of many instances during this build where I had to follow a specific order of different steps, each time requiring some amount of reflection before being able to execute on those. I also had to come up with a way of how to attach my magnetic core drill on a very uneven surface where it wouldn't stick directly. Luckily in this case it was quite easy to attach a thick metal plate to this fin so I could drill my holes. Now that the two holes for the bolts are drilled through the fin, I can drill the holes through the set that goes on the other side of the fin. Next I measure the width of the bow thruster. I cut a total of 6 shorter tubes for each side. These will serve as struts between the two arcs and thus create a cage to protect the bow thruster. Next I'm gonna mark positions of equal distance for where to attach the struts. Now I can weld these onto the first arc, as always first with a few tech welds. I position the second arc on top, and then I weld the arc onto the existing structure. You may notice that I didn't take much care to get all the struts perfectly straight, that's mainly because the purpose of this structure is purely functional. Now let's put parts of the cage in place to see where we are at so far. And the plan is to bolt the cage onto the hull rather than welding it so that it can be removed easily in the future. I used the first cage as a template to get the proper layout for the struts on the second cage. Now I can put together the second cage 
Here too, you can see that not all the struts are perfectly parallel to each other. In some areas, the gaps between the struts and the arc may be larger than in others, but for the purpose that I'm building them, these deviations are perfectly acceptable. Next I'm gonna finish off the welds in a sheltered environment and because I don't have to care for aesthetics I can put down fairly thick welds. This turned out great for the most part. But as always in some areas I got kind of a funky result. As mentioned before, I'm gonna bolt the cages onto the hull. For this I'm gonna use bare steel bolts rather than stainless or galvanized. I made the feed for the cages by simply drilling a hole into a steel flat profile, then cutting off the appropriate section and welding them onto the extremities of the cage. Next I ground down the cages with the angle grinder to make everything smooth and hide my mistakes. With the two sides of the cage finished, I'm gonna finish welding the two spacers. For this I used flux core welding as recommended by many of our viewers and I have to say, I like it. Next I'm gonna mark the positions for where to weld the steel bolts onto the hull. Then I'm gonna insert the bolts we put the cage in its final position and then I tack weld the bolts onto the hull. Of course, this didn't work out with the first try and it took me the better part of an afternoon to get these first bolts in place. But in the end it worked out and after firmly welding the bolts onto the hull and cleaning up with the angle grinder, the first set of bolts was in place. Now let's repeat the same on the other side, this time my process was a bit more streamlined. When welding the bolts to the hull, I was afraid of burning a hole into the hull, so I applied this kind of stitching pattern, hoping that it will be strong enough in case of an impact. Next we put down a few layers of primer and then anti-fouling. The two arcs have also been painted first with primer and then we added a coat of anti-fouling only to the inside as this would be hard to reach once they are installed. Alright, now let's first put in place the arc on the starboard side the biggest difficulty here being to get the holes aligned for the bolts to go through. In the end, everything turned out a bit too tight, so I had to struggle with the hammer and the wrench to get all the parts aligned and the bolts entirely through. Here comes the arc on the port side. This one turned out even more difficult as the bolts were being pushed in different directions by the first parts we installed. But here too, with the help of the wrench and the hammer, eventually we got the bolts through. Next I'm gonna add self-securing nuts and washers to all the bolts. And with that, the installation of the protective cage is finished. Now all that's left is to finish up the anti-fouling and then we can have a look at the result. Now I'm extremely happy with how this turned out. I had quite a few sleepless nights over this entire bow thruster project and if I look at it now, I almost can't believe how well it turned out. Now sure, there are lots of things which I could have done better, more efficiently and even cheaper. And I'm sure you guys will let me know all about it. But it also could have turned out much, much worse. Next I'll have to wire up the control joystick, which I installed into a random piece of wood for the time being. I'm gonna have to pull this cable from the bow thruster 
all the way up to the helm. I'll drill a hole through each of the two walls, separating the interior of the boat into three compartments. I attach the cable right underneath the ceiling at each of those supportive pillars. I do the same throughout the long middle section of the boat. Here especially those pillars are very convenient. Then I drill a hole through the deck, just big enough to let the cable pass through. I wire up the plug on each side of the cable. And with that done, it's time for another quick test. There is a specific term for this, which I only use for a special occasion, and that is yeah, baby. And that's all from me for today. Remember to sign up to the My First Boat Community Facebook group. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.